This video is brought to you by Astapro. More on them after the reaction, peeps. Fallout episode 8. What's up, guys? We were at the finale. <laughs> and it's called the beginning. Weird. Guys, we're at the finale of Fallout. And uh, I'm so sad about it. And well, I'm get really sad. I'm sad. I don't want it to end. I am looking forward to discussing this journey once it's done. So you know what we got to do, guys. Watch Leave it. your thoughts down below. Rate it. Did you guys love it? Rate it out of 10 in the comments. What yeah. you guys think? Leave a like on this video. Please do that. Thanks to Prepper for helping us look all right during this journey. Also, thanks to all of them. Join us at our Patreon page where you get the full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy of Fallout. And we also cover several things over there exclusive with mm. highlights and watch longs included. Follow this guy, owner of Multi House, hey. right here. What's Multi House? Go look it up. You'll go find out. Yeah, it's we're a company. Arriving company. He just he just comes here as a hobby because that's what Michael likes to do. Yeah. Hey, and this time, if you've if you've been watching these reactions, and you haven't left a comment because there's a lot of episodes and you just want to keep watching, leave a comment. Yeah. I want to hear what you actually think, and I want you to know, I'm gonna read everyone because I freaking love Fallout. And I love talking to Fallout fans because I genuinely think that this is like one of the actual best fandoms out there, full stop. We got to start the show, Michael. Gosh. And damn. how? Let's watch God the show. Damn. Ah, uh, this is going to be so awkward. <laughs> They're back to feeling imposing. Find me. I will. I believe in you, Maximus. Maximus Decimus Meridius. Huh. Going through Philly. Philly with a fin. Finny. Oh, wow. Wow, they're like really encroaching in, huh? Ah. Uh. It's gonna get sent north of the wall. Where's your knight? He's dead. This is not the first time a brother in your company has fallen into misfortune. They're just like so out to get him. I fear you lied then. No artifact, my lord. Just as you lie now. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait. God, Please listen to me! Oh shit. Confess. Don't kill me and I can lead you to it! Step up. Please, my lord. My injury was my own doing, not his. For the sake of the brotherhood, please listen to him. Such a display of loyalty. Don't see that much anymore. Guy's so vile. Mm. How did Titus die? He died running. That is the truth. The brotherhood has lost its way. We once ruled the wasteland, and yet power is taken, not given. Mm. If what you say is true, you can lead us to the relic, and together, you and I can restore. We will take power, and with it, we will start a new brotherhood with me as its head and the likes of you as its sword. Oh, wow. What an offer. Oh, that's some uh, protagonist. Does he do this or does he go to Vault 33? Your entire life, you've been looking for a home. Does he follow through with the fantasy? Build one. With me. Oh, the conflict. Guess you won't die. I, I appreciate that they've created this multiple protagonist choice. Yeah. Same as you have in a game. <laughs> God, I would love to visit these sets. So cool. You could really make a whole attraction out of this. That's nice. A real community. It's interesting because yeah, it is LA, but it doesn't feel like LA at all. That's Capitol Records. <laughs> That's cool. No, it, it is. Uh, they've captured the spirit of it. I love you. Love you too. Oh, he's gonna be listening in from the parking lot. Good. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> 
and I don't have kids myself, but I do have a training program for up-and-coming. The basic idea is that the biggest obstacle to achievement has been the brevity of the human lifespan. It's prevented us from uh, working on projects that require centuries, maybe even millennia to see through. So ideally, Bud's Buds will keep my project on track centuries. Uh-oh. Bud, <laughs> we're getting late. Oh, yes. Let's go. Big day today. The cheap oh, piece it together. The cheap piece. say that. Ah, uh, he's just not supposed to be talking about any of that. No. Time to be a spy, sneak in. Act like you're interested in this Buds Buds project. Fault Tech is a scary place, man. Whoa. Whoa. Nice. Damn. Going classic. That was awesome. Papa. Damn, he's just kept in a cage. Oh, she has an NCR flag. Interesting. Oh, it's just a relic. Welcome. Moldiver. Okay. That's Ooh. a real goal right there, too. I got a lot of time to think about this moment. You wouldn't believe the things that went through my head. I think she would. She's been around a very long time. One night, I actually tried to stuff an old grenade into the neck hole. I was going to walk in here and blow everybody up. But that's not really how I was raised. I'm going to keep things civil. <laughs> oh, right on the food. Give me my dad back. Power. But first, what if I tell you how I know your father? Here we go, please. Who he really is. Ah, yes, yes please. Exposition. Feed me. Don't listen to You me. think your father was born in a vault? No. 31. What if they were just like created? It's very possible. A brain. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> Wait, you're not Betty. No, 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 no. Initiate protocol fifty-three. <laughs> you can stop it. <laughs> I won't answer your questions unless you let me inject you with this. <laughs> Don't you go in there. Don't you access the info tree or look at the terminal? Do it all. Oh, God, this is so fallout. There's a new guy who works with Barb, Henry. He's a really big fan of you. Henry. Do you mind if I bring him by just to meet you for a moment? I think my theory's going to come true. See the brain? No, Henry's the dad. Oh, shit. That was my oh, theory. Oh, you're right. That was your theory. <laughs> I know Fallout better than you. Let's face it. <laughs> We'd like to collaborate on some of our vaults. When it's time to come out. What if people are still alive on the surface? Our vaults have the resources to survive for centuries. Meanwhile, our competitors, every other human who isn't us, will be dead on the surface. <sighs> what is the ultimate weapon of mass destruction? Time. Time. Time is the apex predator. And in the event of an incident, time is the weapon with which we will defeat all of our enemies. Damn, and she knew all this. It's how we will win the great game of capitalism, not by outfighting anyone, oh, but by outliving them. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this? If I could perhaps refocus the conversation. Come on, Barb. Set them straight. She ain't going to. When I think about the future, I think about my daughter. Uh-huh. How do I provide her with a better future? That's what we've invited you here to discuss. Yes. <laughs> Where's the rest of the vault? This is the rest of the vault. Is this where my dad's from? You'll never find out. Oh, he's gonna find out. <laughs> this brain. Oh, they're all kept in cryo chambers. These are Bud's Buds. My Bud. America outsourced the survival of this country to the private That's sector. That's Bud in the brain. We kept Vault Tech alive instead. A well-trained staff of highly supervised junior executives. My own assistant training program. Because the future of humanity comes down Thank. to one word. You're right. <laughs> Management. <laughs> Bud here has an idea for three interconnected vaults. But we need more ideas. We need your... Oh shit, this all started with Bud. Where you can play out your own ideas for how to create the perfect conditions for humanity. Oh my god. Oh, that's horrible. And may the best idea win. Oh, that's awful. So what's Vault 32 and 33? Just people to be controlled? When you put it like that, it sounds downright morally questionable. <laughs> the ultimate expression of HRRD, genetically selected to breed with my buzz to create a class of super managers. People with positivity. People who make lemonade. 
Oh no. They thought they were there to save. Uh, the experiments. Yeah. I would like to see a vault governed by it. What about using a vault to develop a super <laughs> mutant soldier using illegal immigrants? Oh my god. But we're talking about making a significant investment. How can you guarantee results? By dropping the bomb ourselves. Wow. Now that is a goddamn revelation. A nuclear event would be a tragedy, but also an opportunity, perhaps the greatest opportunity in history. <sighs> because when we are the only ones left, there will be no one to fight. A true monopoly. Wow. I love capitalism. I'm Henry, but uh, everyone calls me Hank. Whoa, de-aging. Your father has been around for a very long time. I'm just happy I got a theory right. I'm so proud of you, Greg. <laughs> this is our chance to make war obsolete. Oh man, Jesus, how horrifying. We have friction, we have conflict, and we have war. And war, well. War never changes. War never changes. Genius. They said genius. the line. Genius, <laughs> genius, said genius. Said the line genius. you've been waiting to hear this whole time. <laughs> ah, ah, he said it, he said it. That was so smart. Doesn't even play like an Easter egg line. That's great. You think you could give me an autograph? He never told you where he's really from. How could he? I don't blame him. He never told your mother either. Oh, uh, is that why she fled? I mean, he's got to have multiple children by this point. What do you know about my mother? She was like you. She was kind, loving, curious. So she's not the villain. Isn't that why you came to the surface, really? Partly to rescue your father, but to know why I took him. Can't go back to the vaults now. Go live at the Brotherhood, Lucy. I'm not sure they're on the right side here either, Greg. It doesn't matter. Wait, Dane, they're sending you? Punishment for what I did to myself? I was just scared of going in the wilds. I had no idea they'd blame you for it. Oh, actually did. Yeah, actually did, Oh, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was a lie. Yeah. No, they're a real one. Don't be. I was meant to go on that mission. I met someone. I got to kiss someone. Now she's walking into danger. Oh. I am going back to where she came from. A vault. It's a place that's peaceful and safe. Nobody ever goes to war. Mm. Mm. Asterisk. There's nowhere safe, Max. Ah, hey, that's the truth. And there's no leaving. I wish there was. Woof. God damn, it looks beautiful though. Your mother discovered that something was siphoning the vault's water away. I'm curious. From that one clue, she deduced that maybe civilization had returned to the surface. Oh, no. When she told her husband, he said it was a ridiculous idea. How did she know all this? And that's when she realized that her husband uh, was hiding things. Weird. So she ran away. I found Moldaver. And took her children. She found this wonderful city that was everything the vaults had promised her. Did they destroy? But then her husband came after her, and when she decided not to return home, he took Shady the children. Sense. Oh. And he burned that city to the ground. Got it. Wow, it all ties together. Shady sense. Oh yeah. my god. That's how Vault Tech deals with competition, just like they did 200 years ago. Whoa. They just commit acts of genocide. Oh, man. Wow, the flashes were of the real world. What you brought me is cold fusion. It's limitless energy. And we can build a murderer. our own world for everyone. Lucy. It's all coming back. All I need is for him to give me the code. Lucy! Look at me! Look at me! Oh, monsters. My mother. What happened to her? I think you know. No. What? Oh, whoa. Did not see that coming. Oh, that's horrible. Let's give her the code. What's the point of enduring, man? You don't change at all. Jesus. Give her the code, Dad. Her whole belief system shattered. <sighs> the acting here is... It's 
crazy and by living by the butt butts philosophies of positivity and all this that if she wasn't trained that way she might not have made that choice either or behaved yeah. that way it's, it's kind of crazy how it all ties together it's so well written in terms of characters it's layers and layers and he probably only changed a little bit that guy Kyle McLaughlin because of her you're just gonna keep me here just until we're all ready to go to the surface that could be hundreds of years that's why I'd suggest you wait it out in your dad's pod. Unless you want to starve to death, not much food in here, except the occasional very large bug. <laughs> I'd certainly put myself to sleep if I could. She might break the brain. This would be a good amount of empty pods, though. Well, those are all the people that have been reactivated so far. Uh -huh. I did what was necessary to save our people. And that woman over there, she's no different than me. I don't know about that, man. It's just mental management. Incoming aircraft. Well, that's the worst no, the possible brotherhood timing. And shit. Oh, it's all going to collide. We even got our ghoul. We haven't even seen our ghoul. Lucy, I loved your mother, but you stopped being your mother when she left home. That's control. Sick. Wow. That's at the Griffith Observatory? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> really has those. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, my God, no. Lucy, I had to make a choice. But you're a contributor to why this society is the way it is. Between their violent world and our peaceful one. Wow, she's literally the leader of the NCR. Mm. I know I made the right choice. The right choice is letting people have a choice. I like how this looks cool, but doesn't feel cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or as hell. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. A bright new sun will suddenly break through. Ah, oh, man. But I don't want to see alone. I see it. It's the beginning of the show from the Volta surface. If the problem with the world is factions endlessly fighting, endlessly at war, then what is the solution but to get rid of the faction to make the world us? It's a real uh, draconian That's way. a very American way of thinking. Yeah. That's dictatorship, man. Oh. Yeah, you're like not rooting for anyone here. Not in power armor. I see we oh, there he is. Well, I used to wear one back in the day. There was only one problem with it. There was a flaw in the welding just below the chest plate. <laughs> I wonder if they fix that in this new model. Dope. I guess not. Awesome. From a war film to a horror film? You're in here with me. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Damn. Open the door, let's go. What great Coming. use of lighting. Trying to do a good sales pitch on his daughter. Can't hide in the vaults forever. Whoa! Worlds collide. Lucy, I'm her father. Can you get us out of here? Oh, Maximus. We gotta get out of here. No, not with him. Why not with him? What do you mean? He destroyed your home. Shady Sam's. What the hell? Lucy, you're coming with me. Headshot. Oh, oh. Jesus. Max, Max, wake up. 
would she? You see what this place does to people? I'm your father, Lucy. You're a murderer, dude. You came all this way for me. You're not gonna hurt me. <laughs> the ghoul would. Yep. <laughs> oh, you want another autograph, young Henry? <laughs> Your daughter said her last name was McLean, Will. I just couldn't believe that it was the McLean. <laughs> now, I've waited over 200 years to ask somebody one question. Where's my wife? Where's my f***ing family? Yeah. <laughs> Season 2 setup. Coward. Hey, 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 Max. Wake up. Wake up. Up. Come on! Bullshit. That can't be the death of him, would it? I got hit pretty I hard. I can see how that could kill him, but damn. War never changes. You look out at this wasteland, it looks like chaos. Yeah, it's beautiful, though. Cinematically. But there's always somebody behind the wheel, and that's who I want to talk to. The real one in charge. That's where your daddy is headed. But you let him go. Well, it's easier to track a stuck pig than to ask you where it's off to. <laughs> Everything about your whole little world was decided over 200 years ago. Now you could stay here with him. Yeah. Or you could come meet your makers. Put your mom down. <sighs> oh, Max has no idea about the truth. But he probably has an inkling that Vault 33 isn't safe if he knows the truth about the dad. All the brothers in a vault. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Frozen. Phenomenal setup for another season. Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> Should really take the cold fusion with you, or not. <laughs> Ouch. Damn, that looks painful. Lucy. Man, Prime Video, when they deliver, they deliver. <laughs> Ramin Dijawadi is really giving me some great music right now. Oh, this is unlikely. power coming back on his home he understands what do you suppose your brotherhood would do with infinite power <laughs> maybe you can stop them maybe you can't maybe all you can do is try sometimes yeah I still never explained how she made it I imagine she hijacked those cryo chambers you killed her no Dane. take the credit oh! All what in a, a lie. <laughs> what a dark victory. A lot of change to Brotherhood from the inside. I, I love how both our main characters got what they wanted in the beginning, but it is not a victory. Living in a memory. Where's dog meat? Good question. Maybe ask and you shall receive. Yes. <laughs> There's we, a tale. <laughs> we're not a the Hollywood sign right so there. So this is one of the only shows in the past like decade to get the actual licensing for the Hollywood sign. Oh really? To have anything done to it. My shadow and me. Sponsored by New Coca Cola. Uh. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful know. shot. Oh, oh, Greg, you have no idea. No. We'll wait for you. Even till is that what I think it is? Is it Vegas? It's <laughs> New Vegas! <laughs> it's New Vegas! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yes! Oh, man! Oh, well done, Wayne. Yep. Oh, my God. Arguably the most beloved Fallout game come to life. I love that they're giving us a a New Vegas post credit scene. Uh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. 
Huh? I cannot believe they're giving <laughs> us a new Vegas post credit. Oh my god, that is so freaking cool. That's bold. That's so exciting and so bold. Shout out to Astapro for sponsoring us. So some fun facts about me. I've been seeing an ENT the past couple of months. Got a CT scan done for my allergies, and right now I'm trying to find time to get deviated septum surgery. So like many of you, I am someone who's tried pretty much every nasal spray you can think of because I have difficulty breathing through my nose, which leads to day-to-day -day and sleeping problems on a consistent basis. So before agreeing to this, I wanted to try them out myself because this is a serious thing I deal with. They provided me with free samples. This is my second bottle. This is without a doubt the best nasal nasal spray I have ever used. That's not some talking point. That's my very own personal testimony. Genuinely, for me, it's fantastic and lives up to how it's advertised. It's the fastest 24-hour over-the-counter solution available. It gets to work in just 30 minutes while other sprays take hours to kick in. It's also the only one out there that's steroid-free for 24-hour relief. Astapro has seriously changed the game for me, offering full prescription strength relief from nasal congestion, runny nose, and sneezing. The difference this makes is phenomenal. It's kind of insane how this relief to my breathing and nostrils just kicks in and I'm back in action really fast. So if you're like me, battling with nasal allergies and looking for relief, get fast acting nasal allergy or symptom relief with Astapro. Go to astaproallergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go. It's faster with Astapro, bro. I saw that commercial. <laughs> Astapro, it's faster, bro. That's A-S-T-E-P-R-O allergy.com. Remember, use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Thank you again, Astapro, sincerely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Michael, dude, this was... This was a journey, man. I was, uh... I was, like, gripped from beginning to every episode. Every single episode was so good. Everyone was thought-provoking enriching, character-driven, different. <laughs> that was the, that's a, probably one of the biggest takeaways I have. Is like They did something different every single episode. Yeah, They explored something different every time. And the revelations here, you know what I love so much about it, and I do want to hear your thoughts about um, what they did with the, with the very, in, in the flashback when Walton Goggins is listening yeah. in. I love how they manage to keep these truth bombs, huh? no pun intended, <laughs> keep these truth bombs in a way where it's, they're getting this exposition, but it's so telling of the relationship of the wife and, and, uh, and their dynamics and what led to them being apart as established in the first episode that as you're getting this exposition, which is like, Oh man, how terrible. It's also character narrative simultaneously it is it is so uh it is shocking what i i'm so curious for you as someone who like knows the fallout world is there something in here in this particular episode this final episode that you thought was like wow that was surprising that was shocking other than of course getting the vegas set up i'm like so no pun intended blown away by this <laughs> episode <laughs> and you've known me a long time i'm not usually left speechless i usually always have something i'm gonna to just say. align your mic a yeah, tiny bit align there you go um the fact that vault tech managed to in essence obliterate the new california republic at its like height of power is like so devastating that history in essence like repeated itself and i think that is like such a like oh it's like such a sucker punch but also it's yeah. it's so it it makes perfect sense um there's been a lot of indication like I'm one of those people, like when you play the game and you go through like all the different like vaults and all the different buildings, mm. you come upon the different consoles and you can like read all the different entries. I'm one of the people that reads every single entry okay. just to digest <laughs> yeah, every that. bit of the lore, <laughs> you know? Um, and like <laughs> you can contextually like put together that the question was always like, who dropped the bomb first? 
this confirmed, but not necessarily confirmed, right? Like, it indicated that we could drop the bomb first, but it didn't say definitively that we did drop the bomb first. But it, it further adds fuel to the fire that we may very well have dropped the bombs I mean, on ourselves. I mean, they have to have... Cre- Do you know anything about the behind the scenes of who they... They must have worked in conjunction with the yeah, video game so, creators. So, so Todd, that if they're going to mess with this is Todd can- Howard is the executive producer on the project. And this is canon worked, to the game. This is right? all canon. Yeah. yeah. So and so okay. and and it was really smart because this takes place I think about ten years or so after Fallout Four, which is the last canonical uh, piece of of the Fallout universe. Vegas was before Fallout Four. Yeah, just okay. a little bit before. Um, and yeah, I mean it's it's pretty crazy um you know the the kind of the the interesting thing about fallout lore though and and it's kind of hard to explain it right like it's a role-playing game so in every fallout game you decide what happens which means game to game they have to kind of decide ultimately what happened yeah even though that might not be the path that you went sure um so in in this one, the Brotherhood of Steel like clearly got wrecked, <laughs> uh, and and so I'm really curious. Like in New Vegas, um, there's a lot of different like options that you could have gone with. There's a lot of different factions that may or may not exist anymore that are going to add so many interesting mm, elements. Mm. And I thought that was a really interesting part about this is this basically implied that like like the Enclave, which we only really saw in in the Michael Emerson in the opening episode or two um the like scientists and stuff the scientists yeah. and stuff so like they like it it's so interesting to me the choices that they they made but really um uh like for you did you feel like it was all comprehensive like did it all there were times i had to I'm not sure. I feel like I've only had to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, that's what I find so enriching about when you're telling me these things Yeah, is I didn't feel lost for the immediate story, mm. nor was it just about like, I don't, it wasn't like watching Tenet. <laughs> you yeah. know, where I'm like, <laughs> um, I kind of get what's happening right now, but uh, yeah, it looks yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just watch it. And, like I was able to get involved in the story and the sure. characters and, and I, I could understand what was happening, and I just, I think the show did a really, ex, ex, like, they extracted the right DNA per scene mm. and per introduction of, like, even with the Brotherhood and stuff, just to get enough. And then you, you talk, and I'm like, oh, I could get, like, expanded knowledge if I play the yeah, games yeah. And, get, and get all that other well, stuff. Yeah. And I think that's the fun thing about even playing the games, right? Yeah. Like, it, some people are literally just in it for like i want to build a fort <laughs> you know <laughs> like like i want to just like experience like the horror of like exploring an abandoned vault or whatever it is um and i, I think that's what's fun about this show is if i'm like a fan of just like horror or i'm like a fan of action like just in this final episode alone we did so much genre hopping and it was so seamless and there's just like one moment the helicopters are flying up and you're like man this is like you could start playing like like Creedence Clearwater Revival and like you know Fortunate Son you'd be like man that's a great Vietnam yeah. <laughs> you know and next thing you know you have the, uh, the just the the muzzle flash going off and you're in an action film yeah. or or in a horror film rather and it's like it's it's brilliant you know what i just realized what this show did yeah it told you the vault tech lie you yeah. know it starts off where Kyle McLaughlin, the dad, Henry, you're in vault tech and it looks mm-hmm. like they're the heroes, they're the protagonists, and then he's kidnapped by the baddie and the ghoul's a bad guy yeah. and all these things. And as the story progresses, by the time yeah. you get to the end, yeah. it's the complete opposite. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, so, like- and and I don't I don't wanna spoil any of the games in any way, shape, or form. But that's where Fallout, I think, always succeeds the most, is that you will always begin your adventure with a very, I think, a, a good, clear, moral understanding of who you are and what you stand for and what your objective is. And the realities of the wasteland 
And then the realities of like really brilliant writing mm -hmm. and character development will send you on this really fantastic journey that will ultimately always end you in that situation where maybe it's not your dad that you have the gun pointed at the head at, but you, you always have that sort of quandary. And, you know, I, I found there was a moment in this episode where you had the POV of, of Lucy and Maximus and they're both going through these decisions and I'm like experiencing it as though I am playing that character. And I thought that yeah. was like, it's, it's one of those things that for a role playing game adaptation is such an impressive thing to achieve on screen. You know, I, I think the, the last of us did such a phenomenal job at capturing, I think the personality and like the spirit and the character, this was able to capture a whole element of choice and decision and nuance that I, I don't think I've ever really seen done before in a video game adaptation of television. And, you know, full credit to the last of us creative team uh, and a lot of the interviews with the fallout uh, creative team, they like were praising the last of us for paving the way of being like, oh, no, this can be done. Um, you were a big fan of The Last of Us, right? I was a huge fan of, uh, I mean. Of I'm the a, game I, and the. The uh, game, The Last of Us 2 is pr arguably my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Um, and I really did love the show. Yeah. Uh, but that is, th the difference, though, is that is an adaptation of a very specific story. Sure. Where this is a continuation. No, this is an original story. Sure. In the same world, that is also a continuation of the timeline, or from what I gather, you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, it's a so it's a it's a different it's a different experience, and I'm like, this is probably what they should be doing more of, yeah. depending on what you're adapting. Like if you're adapting yeah. if you're adapting the world of this, it makes yeah it may it makes more sense because yeah. um because well, yeah I think I think the way they introduce the world via through the characters is what makes it so excellent. Like, sure. Like they they wrote great protagonists, and I love how in the end they all get what they want, but it's not what they want. It's not ultimately <laughs> what they wanted. Yeah. Like Maximus gets the victory of getting knighted, and it's it's uh, everything rings false. Yeah, she finds her dad, and truth bombs, you know, and finds her mom too. And yeah, go like that was devastating. I, I I think they you know they the writing team on this show. I, I, I imagine from a take, it sounds like the games do it, but the writing team on this show, I, I what I just really commend them for is I, we've all seen the mistakes mm. that happen where it's like, you're either going to get so much information, but it's yeah. not really tied to your characters. And yeah. then here you're not even really noticing it because yeah. it's so f seamless. Yeah. They, they weave it together in a way where you're like, Oh shit, I'm getting all the information, yeah. but it's also completely driving the narrative of the characters. Well, I, you know? I know I sound like a broken fiddle record. Uh, <laughs> see what I did there? That's no, clever. Not yeah. great. All right. clever. But we have experienced every bit of exposition through the lens and perspective and the organic journey of each of these characters. Yeah. And it has made it so much more palpable and enjoyable than just like a never ending lore dump. And frankly, it's like the first time that there has been a multi uh, POV show, at least in recent memory that I can think of that I've like actually really enjoyed, yeah. like probably since like house of the dragon, um, yeah, like if, if there's any others that have, um, that's a really good point. Because yeah, I mean, like we're not just talking about video game adaptations that yeah. fail it. It's like book adaptation shows yeah, fail book it. Book shows, it's, anime it's, adaptations. It's a hard. It's, it's a, a hard medium. It's a hard thing when there's yeah. a big world and the bunch of yeah. rules to like. Oh, you got to really yeah. construct characters around this. Yeah, and and I think they really found a way to make yeah. a character first. Well, it was a, yeah. it was a, an interesting, and I'm curious what the creative process was. Right, like. Yeah. I'm sure the initial gut instinct is this is a single player game where you have a singular protagonist, so it should have a singular POV. And then I'm I'm like I'm almost imagining like what does that writer's room look like? Where it's like, well, I like to play as a character that leans towards the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. Well, I like to play as like a gunslinger, kind of bad character. Well, I like to play as the goody two shoes that is a do gooder that helps yeah, everybody. Yeah. And eventually they probably realize, well, Give him a little bit of everybody in that. And and ultimately, and maybe this wasn't their end goal, 
but in the in a way they've organically achieved and i know uh, if there's any walking dead listeners here hi uh say it anything <laughs> the ones who live. <laughs> thank you i need it <laughs> but like something that i've complained about the the walking dead not the ones who live but the original series is that it really struggled in transitioning with the multi POVs into trying to become this like faction based drama. It was like either too exposition heavy trying to be this big thing and it lost its like special character, like connective tissue. And it just couldn't figure out what it was. This show has somehow managed to, without losing that personal touch, still create this bigger world where I can almost imagine it, whether through spinoffs, whether through just the continuation of this main thread of storyline, they've now set up like there's a really interesting power vacuum. Now they're setting up this idea of rebuilding the world and there's power coming back and there's a need for civilization. There's a lot of interesting stuff that they can do to make this more macro while continuing to experience it through the lens of these characters in a way that feels organic and right. That is, that is one of the, this is one of the best seasons of television I've ever Full seen. Stop. Like, Full stop. Full stop. Even, even looking at Walton Goggins, it's like he was giving two completely different performances, yeah. right? The, the, in the fifties or whatever, right? Fifties? <laughs> yeah. Or retro fifties. And the 2070s. But it's supposed to like feel like, yeah. yeah and it's it's to retro feel, futuristic, yeah. but it's the 2070s. Yeah. It's supposed to, yeah. Uh, that's what I meant. Um, yeah. So that, and then where he is 200 years from now yeah. as the ghoul. And then by the time you get to here, right with that one line of like looking for my family. And then when and he's, he's talking back. to Lucy, you see that, oh, the, you see the, the full tethering of how it's come full circle yeah. is this performance that it is the same. Like yeah. you always knew it was the same character. And you could see yeah. where the line is. But then once you like peel back a little bit of that, yeah. get rid of that mystery, it, it like, bam, it all, it all marries together so yeah. So perfectly. Uh, yeah. And it's like, it was like haunting, you know, and unsettling. Yeah. And uh, funny and weird. I was, I was really, I think this is one of the best season ones of, they could totally botch season two, but no, I, it's, I, I it's, think it's, it's, it's never too late to botch yeah. season two. Um, but I no, think it's but, a season uh, one. It's, it's, it's one of the no, best. No, it's, it's I, I think it's without a doubt my favorite bit of television I've watched this year. Yeah, no, it's powerful TV. Man. Um, I, I think the thing that's most powerful about it is I don't have a least favorite episode. I don't, I like, I can't think of an episode that they I all like, oh, sort that was, of bleed together. Yeah, at a well, certain it, point. it was just a cohesive across the board. I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Um, all right, outside of the ghoul. Who is your favorite character? Lucy, for sure. Okay. I love Lucy. I love Lucy. I love Lucy. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's the funny thing is like, uh, yeah. when, when the ghoul's on screen, he is, he is the most captivating. Sure. Um, I mean, Walton, Go it's really hard. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's actor. really hard to beat Walton Goggins. Like, Walton my, Goggins my is like an amazing actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to be Lucy. Steve, who's yours? I love dog meat. He's a very good boy. Sure. He's done a very good job. Despite being put into some very precarious situations. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think Lucy's, I agree, a phenomenal job. The, um, oh, God. There's just like some subtle acting out of, um, uh, what is the name of the, uh, the overseer and the, uh, which one? Which overseer? Uh, in Vault Thirty Three. Oh, um, I forget her name. What's her name? Oh man, that's gonna drive me crazy. Um, Debbie. Debbie. I her performance, like is that it? Yeah, I think it is. Debbie. <laughs> oh, I was no, that but actually, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I Sally Debbie, one of those little Debbie, little Sally, <laughs> <laughs> little little Debbie. <laughs> Anyway, uh, no, I, I thought it, the way that she was able to just like subtly terrify the actual living hell out of me. Yeah. Um, and when you go back, like to rewatch this and recontextualize that, like the woman with the eye patch, Debbie, all these characters are from the past and are middle management and played an active role in the end of the world. That is horrific. 
Yeah. And that's such a dense, fascinating layer to, to all of this. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, I just, I think the vault tech plot, vault tech has always fascinated me. And, and I think the scary thing is like as crazy as it sounds, it's also not that crazy sounding. I, th- I think the only part of the show that I, I don't know, we're about to fight. It's not about the vault It was jello. It was the gelatin, right? What? <laughs> um, it the only part of the show that I thought was a little perfunctory of like, okay, yeah, they're the lead, so they're gonna do this. But I didn't quite. It, I love them individually, but I didn't quite feel for it. Was the Maximus romance and, and Lucy? Ro- Maximus and, and Lucy. It was forced. It was but, the one part where it, I was like, it, I, it also like it, these two don't know, don't have romance in their lives, so it makes sense they would fall for each other fast. But at yeah, the same time, I didn't uh, really. But it, it didn't strike me so much as romance, as much as like I they're just like buddies, two kids, <laughs> two kids that are of sexually mature age who feel things and who have not ever had any expressions of like physical intimacy and touch. Like, I don't know. I it it didn't strike me as like. I think they might be confusing it as that because they have no education or exposure, really. Yeah. But, like, you know, Lucy also just... Uh, the way in which they talked about sex, like, they don't strike me as the type that really have a good... Have their, no pun intended, head wrapped around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Uh, but, no, I, I agree, though. I mean, Maximus is interesting because I would ebb and flow with the but also it's like it's a character that's been through some crazy trauma and grew up in like a military cult uh so i love how soft he was like in his performance you yeah. know like and i think that surprised me because when you always imagine like a character in a suit like that you imagine yeah. him sounding like tougher like it is his voice he had a soft voice like he played yeah. it like a boy the whole time yeah it was like he was that same boy who lost his home you know yeah. I, th- I thought he actually did an excellent job i feel like that's a performance that could probably be overlooked honestly and, and maybe perhaps criticized but i actually really loved what he was doing well i'm all right i'm gonna give like a weird interesting as like the resident star wars guy in the real rejects a lot of that is everything that i wanted out of like the stormtrooper arc for for John Boyega for Finn. Mm. Like this idea of like a stormtrooper who becomes you're just like comparing black people who wear suits. There it is. Nast, is that what you're doing? Is that what you're doing, Michael? No, just somebody that from a very young age was indoctrinated into a military cult <laughs> <laughs> that worked right, his right. way up. I already talked your way out of that one. <laughs> I had my talking points ready to go, Greg. I I brought the well, receipts. I had the comments ready to go for you. <laughs> I had the receipts, sir. Uh, uh that being said, uh both of them are fantastic actors. And I think John Boy- Boyega was given a, a, a horrifically awful script. Um, uh, but I think I think this has been really neat. And I think the other cool thing that they've set up now is that uh, Maximus is now in a position of, of actual power and influence. And I'm curious to see what does that mean for the paradigm of, of balance in the wasteland? And... Like, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm so, God, I'm just excited. Yeah. Uh, and I really hope that they've started filming right now as we're speaking. Um, but, Greg, final thoughts? Final thoughts, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm like a 10 out of 10 on this show. Are you I, going to play the games? <sighs> Dude, I'm still making my way through Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> I picked that up a couple months ago. And you're never going to finish. <laughs> it's a very long, like, I'm only on the chapter of three. <laughs> that. I'm playing this for like you are never 50 hours. Finish, what Greg. You're never going to get there. It's taking not going to happen. I've Dutch. Heard, I've heard so many people be like, Dutch is one of the best villains. I'm like, he's not even like a villain yet. <laughs> what is going on? You just got to keep giving him his money. <laughs> yeah. You gotta give it so that we can all get out of here, Greg. Arthur! Arthur! Arthur Morgan! I'm telling you, Arthur! Hey, Dutch. I want you to Arthur! That's the game. That's all I'm at in the game so far. Uh, I will say this. 
If nothing else, you should play New Vegas before season two. If nothing else, I'd like to. Pl- I'd like to play fu- because the the funny part here's the funny part about this entire journey. Yeah, I have no clue what the game play would oh. actually be like. And Although, that, it, that's the but well, yeah. When you were like, yeah, this reminds me of like if if we were going on a mission. <laughs> I was like, that's funny because <laughs> this is probably not right. That's, that's not yeah. how that works. Because yeah, like <laughs> uh, you watch you play you watch the Last of Us show and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you fight zombies and yeah. shit, and you hunt. Like it's probably easier yeah. to like correlate what a game might be like. Yeah. And then for me here, I'm like, I still have no clue what the game would actually be if, or feel like or if, what the gameplay would was, be. If this was accurate to the game, we would still be in Vault 33 and I would be <laughs> looking through every single drawer for any piece of scrap until I am over-encumbered and can't walk fast anymore. The game sounds forever. It, the game is forever. The game sounds the, the like thing about, very long. The thing about <laughs> Bethesda games, Greg... Is that Skyrim came out over a decade ago, and people are still playing it. Fallout 4 came out over a decade ago, and people are still playing it. I (laughs) continue to play these games over and over and over again, because they are just marvelous and magic, and no matter how many times you play through you find new things each time. And I think that is just apps like absolutely magic. Absolutely. Uh, so anyway, final thoughts, 10 out of 10 from me. Uh, honestly, I'm like giddy with radioactive. I got a smile as big as Maximus, uh, Greg and how, <laughs> Hey, uh, we'll see you on season two. Uh, in the meantime, what did y'all think of this amazing show? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What game should Greg play first? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to hit that like. And if you want to watch more amazing, exciting, wondrous, fun, I'm running out of hyperlative no <laughs> <laughs> reactions, be sure to hit that notification bell. We'll also let you know of impending nuclear apocalypses uh thank you for being here and a member of the reject nation we love you and uh be safe out there bye bye guys thank you for being with us